You have a lot of nerve coming here. Explain yourself. I never considered myself a bad man. I was not like others, nor was I expected to be. Half French, half Vietnamese, I would never say my life was easy, but it was comfortable. I was formerly an assistant to the general, a strong man whose ego was about as big as his biceps. But I was a traitor, leaking CIA information to the communists. It was a better thing to do, both for my heart and my wallet. But it wasn't to last long. We knew when Saigon fell we had to get out, and get out quick. I only got my best officers and my best friend Bon. I'll never forget that last night we spent in Vietnam. It was Bon, me, and Mon. We were comrades, brothers, and although about to be split by sea, we were united by two forces more powerful than any guns or water. Liquor and blood. Even though we were on separate sides of Vietnam's divide, I dare say we were never closer. That night, Saigon fell, and so we left. We arrived in the United States, familyless, countryless, and identityless. Life was not easy. We were disrespected. It was our fall from grace. The general, always a man of his pride, was reduced to a shadow of his former glory. In an attempt to redeem himself, he opened a liquor store, but to no avail. The constant emasculation and humiliation was too much to bear. I in particular was hit hard. Being a CIA double-crosser, my English was immaculate, and yet, everywhere I went, I was treated just as another immigrant, just another ching in the pot of chongs. They never expected my English to be good, and they let me know. I resented their expectations. In need of a sense of purpose, I took a clerical position at Occidental College. There, I met Miss Mori, a small fair lady, a source of validation in a world of discrimination. It was not to last. I soon moved on to grasses greener, and who else but the general's daughter, Lana. We both knew we could never maintain it, and we drifted apart. It was soon after I landed a job as a film consultant for The Hamlet, a Hollywood film about the war. I hoped to bring light the horrible Vietnamese sight of proceedings, but things were complicated, leading to my suspected attempted murder by the director. I was working on this set that I got to see the Philippines, a representation of the state our nation would be in had the Americans won. The whole experience was quite disheartening. I returned to LA soon. I never stopped writing to Mon. We were brothers. I could never let him go. The greatest betrayal isn't against one's country, but against one's comrade. He was my tether to my home, and I wouldn't let go. Being the man he is, the general couldn't take the oppression forever, and he found us a way to return to Vietnam. My brother Mon discouraged my coming, but I couldn't live like that either, so I left with the troops. It was there I almost lost Bon. I just managed to save his life, but to no avail. We were captured and sent to encampment. It was there I wrote my confession. I never said what I wanted you to hear. I refused to rule out a part of the story. I told both sides, characteristically, leaving nothing out. Absolutely nothing. While I still consider myself a communist and revolutionary, I acknowledge my friendships with those who are supposedly my enemy, and I understand that all soldiers are honorably fighting for their home. My confession drafts were rejected, yet, under strange circumstances, I find myself here before you. I've heard enough. Take him away. N no, it, it can't be. What a pair we are. Turn off the lights. I can't see. What is more precious than independence and freedom? Happiness? What is more precious than independence and freedom? Love? What is more precious than independence and freedom? I don't know. What is more precious than independence and freedom? I wish I was dead! <laughs>